Hello and welcome to the first species profile on this channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Tetradon myrius, or as it is commonly known, the potato puffer or the Congo puffer. Now the myrius is a very popular species among oddball aquarists and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at its characteristics and discussing its care requirements for captivity. The first thing to note about the myrius is that it's not a particularly active species. This doesn't mean that it's boring or lacks character, but if you're looking for a puffer fish who is going to come and greet you at the glass and is going to be visible at all times, then this probably isn't the species for you. The Myrius is a wallowing species, meaning that it buries itself in the substrate. This is how the fish will spend the overwhelming majority of its time. This is also how the species naturally hunts, ready to launch a surprise attack on any prey items that may swim by. It is for this reason that the myria should be provided with a soft sand substrate that's at least five centimetres deep, so the fish can exhibit these natural behaviours. Now the height of their aquarium isn't really important, because the fish will seldom use these higher areas of the tank. The area of the tank that it will use is actually the floor space, so for this reason I recommend the tank with a footprint of at least 60 centimetres squared. This one is a custom made, it's 60 centimetres wide, 60 centimetres front to back, and is approximately 30 centimetres high. This translates to about 100 litres of water. The Myrius most commonly inhabits the very clean, fast flowing and highly oxygenated waters of the Congo River Basin and many of its tributaries. These conditions need replicating in the aquarium, with a medium to strong flow and frequent partial water changes to maintain excellent water quality. The flow is usually achieved with spray bars from a canister filter, which can be slightly angled towards the surface of the water, which will create lots of agitation, facilitating a gas exchange and ensuring that the water is always highly oxygenated. In the wild, the myrias naturally preys upon other fish, which is why it is important to keep them with no other tank mates. Some keepers enjoy success in keeping groups of myrias together, but this isn't something that I really recommend. In general, the species is very intolerant of conspecifics, and it's important to recognise that behaviour can change over time, especially when the fish reaches sexual maturity, where it will likely become very territorial. One of the most important elements in keeping the myrias is to provide a varied and balanced diet containing the correct foods to ensure that its nutritional needs are being met. The Myrius is primarily a piscivorous species, but it will also eat the occasional worm or small insects. The Myrius should not be offered cockles, snails, mussels or similar mollusks. Instead of eating these hard-shelled foods, this species maintains its fast-growing teeth by crunching through the bones of its prey. My preferred foods for these fish include fish meat, which is cut up into manageable chunks, hull sand eels, earthworms, cockroaches, crickets, locusts and woodlice. Some areas of the internet may recommend the use of live feeder fish for this species, which is something that I don't recommend. Myrius does not need to eat live fish in order to thrive in your home aquarium, and it will often readily accept frozen thawed foods immediately after settling in. Feeder fish are often bred in squalid and overstocked systems where bacteria such as culminaris and parasites can spread through very quickly. Feeding these fish to your puffer just greatly increases the chance of introducing one of these harmful pathogens to your beloved pet, who then may become sick and require treatment. Some feeder fish, depending on the species, may also contain thiaminase, which is an enzyme that breaks down or inactivates vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 is an essential nutrient to most animals, including fish, as it converts carbohydrates into glucose and is particularly important in nerve system function. It is crucial that this species is offered a wide selection of foods, and foods containing thiaminase must not make up any more than 20% of the fish's overall diet. The myrius is capable of metachrosis, which is the ability to change colour. The colour may appear brown, orange, yellow, cream, olive green, grey, black and red. It will often change its colour to camouflage against its surroundings. Red variants of this species are highly sought after and they are frequently referred to as red congos or red potatoes. The myrias will grow to lengths of approximately 15 centimetres and is completely freshwater. 
maintain a pH between 6.5 and 7.5, with 7 being the optimum, and keep it within a temperature between 25 and 28 Celsius, with a hardness between 4 to 15 degrees. Well, that concludes today's video. If you found this care guide helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I have written a more detailed care sheet for this species, which is available on the website at www.straighttalkingfish.com. I'll post a link for that care sheet in the description. If you'd like to see more of me and the puffer fish in the future, which I have over 50 of by the way, please consider subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you again.